since we are since since people are are gathered and everything now, um, I do want to kind of get moving. Um, we are going to do two workshops today. One of them is poi building, and one of them I actually um, entirely rewrote last night. It's called Momentum um, because I used to teach it in a much nerdier sort of way, and I was like, you know what? If I have 20 minutes with people, I want something that's going to stick with them forever. They may not get the, all the terminology that they need for an advanced degree in flow, but they'll be able to pick them up and enjoy them when they're stuck at home. So um, I'm going to try to read, ans read questions and answer them fully as they come up in on the live stream uh, because this will be posted as a video later. Um, so yeah, let's get let's let's kick it off. It's eleven oh three. So I think the big question is what are poi? Um, I've actually had that come up a few times um, with various friends. Hey Noel, um, and uh, poi are basically uh, they're they're an object that you dance with that has something that creates distance to a handle and a weighted end. That's essentially what's going to happen with every type of poi. There are a ton of different poi. Um, these are poi. My poi are falling all over the place. Um, we've got different sorts of sock poi. I've got my first poi ever from back in 2001, which are kind of tied up right now, but they have a big long tail to them. Um, and they're a tiny string. Uh, and then we've got sock poi, which we are going to be making today. These are um, some poi I've had for a good long time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna make some sock poi because those are the easiest to make with what you have at home. Um, and that is the goal, is to, to, to be able to, to go into that pantry and be like, okay, what can I do? So a couple things. If we're making sock poi, basically the handle and the distance mechanism is a sock. If you don't have a sock that you're willing to part with, you can also use something like a plastic bag. So a, a, I have produce bags right here. You can do um, plastic bags, all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, so that's what we're, I wanna make sure that everyone, if you don't have those with you, go out and get those as I run through a couple little, you know, history things around Poi, because it's really nice to know where things come from. Speaking of where things come from and in context, I promised to show off the shirt that I'm wearing. This is the, the Shai Diderad shirt. Uh, Shai Diderad just happened. Um, it was created by the uh, founder uh, of the Full Moon Jam and her husband, and it supports Chicago food pantries, which is wildly important right now. So uh, just wanted to give a big shout out to them. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of shout outs and names and stuff like that. I'll try to drop links in comments afterwards so people can go find things. Um, but first off, where are poi from? A little bit of context. These are from uh, New Zealand. Uh, the Maori people uh, created um, a dance that was very choreographed um, that uh, used poi, uh, went into fire, um, and they traveled across the Pacific. Um, there was a big boom uh, really in the 90s uh, in the West Coast, a um, lot of rave stringing. Burning Man uh, became a big spreader of, of fire culture and of poi and object manipulation in general. Um, and that is out in the West Coast is where I got started. Um, there was a big move from uh, a group over in Oakland uh, at the Vulcan where a lot of people lived um, that really pushed a lot of things forward. Um, I'll drop the link later, but the Vulcan Tech Gospel is for beginning and advanced people. Um, and that, if you want to take a big, deep dive, uh, is really fun to play with. They have a new app that's out uh, that's really fun to play with. Um, I also want to uh, talk a little bit about the fact that people are teaching poi um, all over the place and really spreading. One of the best teachers that I know of who's doing a similar series that was really an inspiration for the Full Moon Jam, uh, Ben Drexler. If you look up Drex Factor Poi, um, you can take a deep dive from the beginning right away as well. Uh, that's on Facebook. I can put the link later on as well. Um, so there are a lot of sources for this. 
But the Full Moon Jam was like, you know us. This is our community. We want to reach out and teach you as well. So we hope that you will follow along with all the stuff that we're doing too. Um, some whys uh, behind spinning. Um, you get engaged. You feel good. You're practiced. You're in your apartment. You're kind of trapped right now. You want to move a little bit. You want to see people and feel a part of stuff. Get engaged and learn new things. Um, one person who actually was a part of the Full Moon Jam in the past uh, who has moved to New Zealand, uh, Kate Regal Van West, she has a website, spinpoi.com. She did a dissertation on the benefits of poi in older adults. Uh, and she had some really interesting uh, findings um, that kind of on the similar level as Tai Chi, uh, spinning poi can be really beneficial for older adults. Um, while I don't have specific scientific backing, I think that applies to younger adults as well. And I guess I'm more of a middle adult too now. Um, so yeah, so practice, um, feel like you're, you're picking up stuff, you're learning, don't let yourself atrophy, engage. Um, so that's what this is all about. So now I hope that you all have um, a sock and some sort of weight uh, to drop into that sock that is somewhat soft. Um, you want something that has a little bit of heft because you need to use momentum to keep going, um, but you also are going to hit yourself as you practice. I guarantee it if this is your first time. So you want something that has a little bit of a give. Um, something that one of the uh, original people that was at the very first Full Moon Jam and is also on, still on the board, uh, BK Ellison, he is an advocate of oranges. Be careful, but if you're careful, you can eat them later. It's a delicious set of poi. Um, you can also, I stole these from my son, um, little lightweight plastic balls. Um, I have tennis balls that are actually being used in here right now, um, but they are great uh, for this. And something that I really, really personally like, if you have balloons, not tiny balloons, but you know, moderate sized balloons. Um, if you fill them with water or rice or lentils, and not very much, you can see that I haven't added, I haven't added any pressure to this balloon that I put water into. You're not making a water balloon. You're making the worst water balloon ever. It, you throw it as hard as you can off someone and it will bounce. That's what you want because when you hit yourself, you don't wanna get this big water splash. Um, so I made two of these. And what I'm going to do is, actually I'll show you guys with an orange and a sock first, to make your poi. This is the grand lesson here. You drop the weight into the sock. And now you have a poi. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the poi making. Um, really getting the ingredients and just doing it. Um, with a bag like this, you drop it in here. You wanna lower the wind resistance. So what I would suggest doing is drop the water balloon in there and then just tie a little basic knot at the end, like that, and then maybe one in the middle. And then you don't wanna shorten it too much, but you can hold the end. And now you have something that's a bit aerodynamic. Is it a long set of poi? No. You know, right now that's about my, my palm to my elbow. What you really want is, if you can, to your bicep, but you know what, to start off with, this is perfectly fine. Um, so I would highly recommend that. For these, um, I'm gonna use these poi because I think they're probably gonna be pretty visible. Oops, pretty visible. I've got all the poi sitting down here as I move them. One other thing, I wanted to show you one more example of poi that feel especially relevant today. If you've seen me around the full moon jam, you know I use big, big fire. And these are uh, the poi that I use for the gigantic fire. They are made by a company called Dark Monk. Chad, uh, who runs Dark Monk, um, has converted his operation into creating face shields for hospitals in Boston. He's created an amazing design, um, and uh, apparently they're asking for like 5,000 of them right now. Um, so, I. Uh, Message me uh, privately if you want, but I can get you info if you want to uh, kick into the GoFundMe and everything for that. 
I don't necessarily want to put a specific ask on this video, um, but I have posted it globally on my page if you want more info for it, uh, or you can just ask me. Uh, but he is one of the many people in uh, the floor arts community that's really going above and beyond and uh, and making this, this entire situation um, a lot better and really supporting. So we've got your poi. You've made them. I hope you are standing up and that you have a little bit of space. I'm doing this kind of in a ceiling sort of space, so I do limit myself as well. I'm gonna to try to be kind of like your living room. Um, be aware of what's around you. Um, back in the day when we used to go to kind of more underground parties and you know you have spin jams where you know 50 people are all spinning in the same room, you really learn not to hit other people quickly because these are your friends, they're your teachers, they're all these great people and you know. So pay attention to your lamp, pay attention to your TV, they might not give you the exact feedback um, that you would normally get. Um, so, uh, go slow. You're gonna hit yourself a bit. Don't go too fast right away. Um, when you move, go slow. You're gonna, one of the big things that you're gonna realize, and this is what I've entirely rewritten the next uh, step about, is you're gonna be changing your relationship to the poise momentum. Um, this is not you pushing the poi all over the place. You are going to be moving with it. Um, and a lot of what happens is the poi kind of moving in a similar sort of way and you just changing your relationship. Understand that it has its momentum, that it is going in a certain sort of way and you can help mold that, but you can't force that. Um, so if you try to force different things, that's when you're really gonna start hitting yourself. Um, and you're gonna be working a lot on proprioception um, and exteroception which is the understanding of where your body is in relation to itself uh, and where objects um, and things outside your body are in relation to yourself. You're really gonna be building um, a strong sense of other as you do this, uh, which is one of the elegant, wonderful things to feel really connected to the world around you as you move and to feel in many ways your body extending and gaining these new powers of movement because these are kind of in many ways like extra magical limbs. Um, does anyone have any questions um, as we're going on anything? It's been kind of a bunch of history and background and why, um, but but people got poi? They made them, you dropped the weight into your sock? Okay, because we're gonna start moving into actually moving them. Um, because yeah, that's the, the immediate thing that you wanna do once you have these things. You're like, they're magic. Um, so what we're gonna do is I entirely threw out the old script, which is really important uh, of timing and direction. Um, and that's something that you should absolutely learn. And I will drop a little bit in there. If you're gonna really take the deep dive, you're gonna wanna know timing and direction. But I developed this course specifically for if I have 20 minutes with you and I can show you uh, very briefly how to move, then you can move in your apartment and you can be like, wow, I'm gonna entertain myself for days. Cause you know what? You can entertain yourself for days and weeks just on what I'm gonna show you today. And then you can take a massive dive if you're like, wow, I really dig that. Um, so we're gonna learn three major things, circles, pendulums, and stalls. Um, and we're going to learn them uh, really as momentum-based movements. So I'm gonna flip my notes over to momentum. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in. So, momentum and relativity. As I mentioned, you are changing yourself in relation to these poi that are moving or that are not moving. Um, first thing we're gonna talk about is zero momentum. If you hold your poi up like this, this is zero momentum. This is your starting point. It's also a stall. Um, if you are moving your poi um, and you stall, whoop, I'll stall into screen, uh, basically you're going from in motion to not in motion anymore. Um, when you're dancing, this will often be a momentary thing, uh, but it's really important because you can 
since there's no momentum, this is when you can really easily add momentum, change directions, um, do a lot of different sorts of things to transition between different stuff. You'll realize after time that stalls are everywhere. So that's kind of like this, this, this point. If we're building almost a, a three-dimensional type system, this is a point that you can add energy to. The next thing to think about after the stall is periodic motion. That's the pendulum. So I will swing this right here. And basically what's happening is you're doing the lower half of a circle and you're essentially, it's the, the poi itself is stalling and changing direction each time. Um, it's really important to recognize these are not necessarily the most aesthetic stalls um, as you go, um, but these are stalls. The poi is stopping um, and it's changing. And this is periodic. So this means that it's on a very, very regular basis. Um, there's a little bit of energy and it keeps going back. So we're looking at that momentum as it tick tocks back and forth. And you can see that my hand is maybe dipping a little bit. There are a few different ways of doing it. You can kind of turn your wrist a little bit. You can dip your hand a little bit, I think is the way that I do it, or um, just kind of give a little flick to give a little energy into the system. Um, so, you can't say that much about direction with these because they are constantly, <coughs> excuse me, they're constantly changing direction. You can uh, talk about timing in relation to each other. Uh, and this is gonna be one of those really important topics that you're going to want to know. Um, hey, Jessica. Um, so this is together time. Um, that means the poi are moving together really in parallel. Um, you know, they're kind of like two clocks that are in sync. And then there's split time, which is when they are moving, excuse me, um, in different uh, counter to each other. So it's easier to see in circles, but this, these are um, in split time as opposed to same time, right? All right, so it's really important to remember that we're talking about the poi relative to each other. Um, if we want to, oh, I actually wanna show you one other thing right now, and I'm gonna tilt this down so you can see me more fully. At this point, we've talked a little bit about timing. I wanna talk a little bit about planes. Um, because you can imagine that there's a box uh, around you. And next to you, if you're spinning like this, kind of like jumping rope, this is called the wheel plane. And so like you're in a, you're in a car, you're in a wheelchair, uh, you're in a go-kart, you have wheels right next to you. It's really important to be able to keep that line to almost draw a box on the floor. Actually, if you have blue painter's tape or something like that, you can tape something on the floor to help guide you. But it's really important to try to get your poi to consistently swing straight. Right now we're just doing pendulums, but I can basically draw a line on the ground like that. That is the wheel plane. The wall plane is in front of you, almost like you are standing in front of a wall. And, you know, it's kind of like I'm, I'm tick-tocking in the shape of the wall that's right in front of me. So that's wall plane. And this is wheel plane. Okay. So it's important to know those uh, as well. And that's, um, that's, those are, we will build on those. So if we want to pop into consistent momentum then, instead of periodic momentum, we can go into circles. So you can do circles. Don't go too big, because I think that you probably have a ceiling above you, because you are inside, at home, sheltering in place responsibly. Um, so you've got these wheels, um, and you, there are a couple different things to remember. We want to know about the poi in relation to each other. There are terms that you can talk about that are poi in relation to you as well. Things like clockwise and counterclockwise are really your relationship to the poi. Because if you turn around, if I turn around like this, all of a sudden the poi are still doing the exact same thing, but I've changed my relationship. So counterclockwise and clockwise and forward and reverse are totally relative things. Those are you relative to the poi. What we want to talk about when we're talking about direction is the poi relative to each other. 
Um, cause that's gonna, that's gonna identify the class of tricks that you're talking about, uh, in a, in a different, more useful sort of way. Um, so people can, it's kind of like go left, go right, clockwise, counterclockwise, forward, reverse, totally useful. If you're talking to a friend, totally not that useful. If you're, you're talking about how to do a trick, um, something that you are going to want to know is the poi direction relative to each other. So right now you have same direction where the poi are going in the same direction and opposite direction where the poi are going in the opposite direction. Almost like a, you know, you could imagine like, um, not exactly like an egg beater, but um, where they're uh, like a pitching machine or a, a tennis ball feeder or something like that. Um, so you'll have these two circles going toward each other. So that is opposite direction. And when they're going the same direction, like wheels on a car, then you're going same direction. Sound good? Hi, Bridget. Hi, hi Liz. Okay, so you can combine those for four unique timing and directions. That's exactly the thing I'm not gonna go into today because that can make your mind explode. It's amazing to think about, um, but I wanna teach you guys how to, how, to, how to get some moves going. So now that we have momentum, so we started off with uh, that, that periodic motion where there were those stalls. Now that we have actual momentum, I can introduce the last plane that you're probably not gonna be using that much right now, but it is useful to know it exists. It's the floor plane, or you could say the ceiling plane. Um, and that's, you know, if you had not only a square that you were standing in, but a, a full on cube, it's that third dimension. So you have another plane there. Really, we're gonna stay in the wheel plane and the wall plane to learn what we're gonna, we're gonna finish learning today. So, you have, you've learned three different driving styles right now. Um, those driving styles will combine with other driving styles. They will form more complex driving styles. You'll mix them in timing and direction and all this different stuff. When I talked about the VTG app you can get on your phone, you can be like, what is this driving style with this driving style? And you do crazy geometries and find out what the body can do and what it can't do. And it gets theoretical and awesome. But for now, we have uh, one of the important things to learn how to do, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see it, is to transition between a circle and a pendulum. And it's fairly easy. If you, you know, give the circle a little flick of your wrist, it's a little stronger than the flick of the wrist uh, that you give on the pendulum. But it's fairly natural to be doing this. Hi, Skylar. So do this at home. So right now we are in the wall plane. We're just making a little circle with one hand and then letting it slow down to a pendulum and then giving it a little extra energy to get it over the top into a circle. And when you do it, make sure to go both directions relative to you. So clockwise and counterclockwise, which are not as useful when you start getting two poi together. So do that with one hand and then do that with the other hand. You've got your tick tocking and then you can bring it over the top and then go tick tocking and do it other way. One of the really important things to start doing immediately, and this is where some of the best benefits of poi come, come in. I love this so much. Um, Practice both hands, both directions, all the timing and directions that you can. Um, you gotta practice forward and reverse, not both directions. And in all the timing and directions that you can do, your body will balance itself out. I used to be wildly right dominant. Um, now I can do so many more fine motor and gross motor things with my left hand. You will get these massive gains. It'll change how you interact with the world, how you think about the world, how, you know, your body sense within the world, make sure to balance yourself out. Don't be like, hey, this is easy with my right hand. I guess I'm just doing everything with my right hand. Make sure to work and practice. And when you are able to do things with your, with your non-dominant hand, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, I'm, yeah, 
I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. So next thing that we're gonna do is do that together. So you can do this in together time, or uh, 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 do this together same, and then let them tick tock, and then go the other direction. Everyone doing this at home? Then let them pendulum and go back the other direction. And you can really start emphasizing stuff. If you have space at home, make sure that you have space at home. But these pendulums, these little pendulums I'm doing so you can see it, you can start doing big pendulums and then make them a little up high and then make them a little down low you know, these are moves that you dance with. The moves themselves are not the dance. You're going to want to do different things. You might make little circles and, and move up, down, tick tock. So you can move around in the same plane right now. You don't want to be bending planes. Um, but play with those a little bit. The other thing that I really want to teach you is doing a circle to a down stop. And a circle to a down stop. So what you're going to want to do with a stall is try to follow the head of the poi. And I'll try to make this small so you can see it. Try to follow the head of the poi with your hand. Um, it just makes it a little bit cleaner. The way to kind of learn this, I think, is to actually skip the circle and just take this up over the top and follow it. Up over the top. It's almost like you're making an inverted U shape because if you can do that you do that one hand and the other I mean basically you're just you're just kind of strutting going back and forth if you can just take these from side to side next to you rhythmically that's a really 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 important thing for what comes next okay I'll even give you a hint. With my feet planted, I can have my body looking this way and then my body looking that way. If that gives you a hint, what would come next after this? This is one of the ways that you turn. So take it from your side, back and forth. We're not doing any leg work, we're not connecting it but this is a really important transition for turning, okay? So you can, if you want, do that and stall, and do that and stall, so circle and stall, circle and stall, circle and stall. And almost feel like you're taking newspapers off of one stack on one side of you, doing a circle, having some flair with delivering the newspaper, Deliver it to a stack on the other side of you. If you can do that back and forth, use your body, use your legs. You're doing this for a little bit of exercise and movement, right? So, if you can do that, you're going to be so on the way to turning, which really used to confuse beginners, and now people are starting to learn uh, how, to, how to really get it right off the bat. So, um... I think that is the that is most of what I wanted to show you guys, and I wanted to keep it digestible. We're at about a half hour right now. If you want something a little more advanced, a challenge to work on, um, you might want to try. So we've been doing this down stall. You know, we're just practicing that back and forth, and really, you want to follow the energy. You're giving energy, and then you want to follow the energy with your hand. Um, but what you can do is connect that down stall with an up stall, which is basically if you do a similar thing with, but, but it's, it's more of a stylized version of the pendulum. Before I was having you do this, which is perfectly fine, but you can kind of follow it a little bit and let it go upright which is kind of cool. If you can let this go down and then let this go up and down and up 
And basically it's a circle where you're just stopping and reversing. You're stopping there at the down stall and at the up stall. And if you can do that with one hand, do it with the other hand. Not if you can do it, try it with both hands. Okay? So if you can practice those two, and then you can practice them together. And then you can split time those because you can change the timing and direction. Because I taught you that, you know, this is basically, it's almost like a pendulum that goes overhead. So if you do that, and then you split those, and you come together and apart, and then maybe you want to drop one below, do one above. You know, you can really start combining these already in the wall plane in some really interesting sort of ways. And you really want to jam out with those. You really want to drill what you can drill and jam out where you can jam out. Um, I think that is the majority of what I wanted to cover um, right off the bat. I hope it was a useful framing to talk about it in momentum. Um, to recap, I'm not gonna recap the first part because that was really just giving you guys a grounding on the building point. But what we did in this second one is we talked about momentum. We talked about the point not moving as being zero momentum and being the stall and it has infinite possibilities. You can go anywhere from a stall. We talked about the periodic motion that has two natural stalls at the end of it. We talked about consistent momentum, which is circles. We talked about the wheel plane. We talked about the wall plane. We talked about the floor plane, which is also the ceiling plane. Um, and we talked about poi relative to each other and poi relative to you. So for instance, this is counterclockwise. When I turn, all of a sudden, whoa, they're going clockwise, but they're relative to you doing the exact same thing. Um, we talked about timing, where we are together time, and this is split time. Um, and we're talking about same direction and opposite direction. And those will create four timings and directions together. Um, one last thing that I would say I would recommend to do as you're practicing, um, really make sure that you're keeping your planes. If you're keeping, if you're learning to keep your planes right off the bat, draw lines on the floor while you do pendulums and, you know, while you do pendulums and add a circle, 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 double check yourself on the floor, make sure you're staying straight, go in reverse, reverse, reverse. Double check yourself on the floor. Um, make sure that right off the bat you're doing this and not getting all over the place because then you'll, that's when you're gonna start hitting yourself. But since you're using water balloons and lentils and oranges and rice, hopefully that won't hurt. So I hope that helped everyone uh, get a start. Um, I will drop some of those links that I was talking about in the comments. Um, I hope you guys had a great time. Uh, hit me up with any questions you have. And uh, thank you all for, for staying inside, for being part of this community, for taking care of each other. Um, that's one of the things that, that we value so much in the Flow community and in the Full Moon Jam in particular. Um, I am so grateful to all of the people that are continuing this project. Uh, Devin Bean has been doing an absolutely amazing job. Uh, uh, Ryan and Betsy and BK, um, all the organizers, they're doing so much work. This is such a huge surprise and change for everyone. Um, and also we, we hope to support and build community through all of that as well. So thank you all very much. So much love to you guys. Hit me up with questions and, uh, and enjoy your movement. Bye-bye.